Hi all, Angular 13 is available now. Let's see what are the different updates which comes along with Angular 13. Angular 13 can be run on only node versions greater than 12.20 and it has also added support for the node 16 version. Angular 13 has officially stopped supporting the IE 11. Related to this, some changes are available in Angular 13 project. So, if you check the browser's list, you can see that the entry related to the IE 11 has been totally removed. Similarly, all the polyfills which are needed to run the Internet Explorer has been removed from the polyfill.ts. They have also updated the type definition for the target runtime environment. So, it has been updated from ES 2018 to ES 2020. The version of TypeScript used in Angular has been updated to 4.4 and as a result they have also introduced two new compiler options into the tsconfig.json. One is the no implicit override and other is no property access from index signature. So now let's take a look at what these properties means. So I have created a sample application in Angular 13. So, initial we will be looking at the no implicit override. So, normally in our applications we might be using some base components. So, there is a scenario like we have a method that is implemented in our base class. So, in this case I have created a method called init and this base component I am extending in my app component. So, here in my app component as well, I am using a method called init and actually I am overriding the base class method. So here you can see that previously in Angular 12, if I do the same thing, this is an Angular 12 application, I can simply override that method, like I can simply give init and I will be able to implement that method. But from TypeScript 4.4 onwards, they won't allow that. So in case you need to override that particular method, you need to add a keyword called override. So unless you give that, it will be resulting in a type error. So this is the error. This member must have an override modifier because it overrides a member in the base class. So that is one new feature that is introduced in TypeScript 4.4. The second configuration is the no property access from index signature. So this also let us explore with an example. So here I have an interface. So it implements a user interface and it has two keys. Like one is a type which is of either admin or a normal. And other than that I can define any key which is of type string and which has a value of string. So now I am making use of this interface in my app component. So here I declared a constant of type user and I am just giving the type as admin. Previously in Angular 12, I will be able to directly give a value like this user.name and I can assign a value. But from Angular 13 that is TypeScript 4.4 onwards you cannot directly give a dot accessor but you need to make use of the index so that is the result of this particular indicator which we turned on so it means basically in case we define a property like this of a index type you cannot make use of the dot operator but you need to access it in this format so that is another change that has been introduced in TypeScript 4.4. Another thing that has been introduced is the static block. So which can be used for initializing the static variables or static properties. So in this class I have created a static property called counter. And using this static block we will be able to initialize this particular counter. So this is a very simple example. I am directly assigning a value. But in case I had some complex logic like I need to check some value, I can put that in my static initializer. 
and I will be able to assign value conditionally to this particular static property. Another important update in the dependency is the RSJS library which has been upgraded from version 6 to version 7. So there are many impacts on this upgrade. So I will show one particular example which we commonly use. So you will be familiar with the to promise method which can be used to convert a particular observable to a promise. So this to promise has been deprecated as of angle uh, RSJS 7. So this is a RSJS 6 version and here I am using the same code in RSJS 7. You can see that it is shown as deprecated. So the equivalent of this is a new method or function has been added called last value from. So you can directly pass our observable into this function and it will convert it to a promise. So this is the way we need to replace the to promise operator in RSJS 7. Another good news is that the view engine compiler has slowly been moved away to the IV. So as a result of that, all the Angular packages like the Angular Core, the Angular Animation CLA, everything, all these are no longer supporting the older versions like UMD and everything. And these are directly generated in ESM 2020 and ESM 2015. And one more thing is that since the view engine is deprecated, the NGCC compilation will no longer be needed when we build or test our Angular applications. So this will considerably speed up our development process. So previously you can see that there are different bundles and Angular will be internally compiling them to the IV compatible NGC uh, format using the NGCC compiler. So that has been totally removed. So another change is the way in which we can build our packages. So here also similarly they are no longer generating the older bundles. So let's take an example. So I have created a library called core. So this is the output of our library in Angular 13. So you can see that it is similar to the Angular core library. Target is ESM 2020. So it will be the main bundle. Similarly, Previously in Angular 12, it was getting generated like UMD was also generated and the main target was ESM 2015. So now we will be able to publish our packages in IV format and also it is generated in the IV partial compilation mode so that these bundles can be used across multiple versions of Angular. Angular 13 has enabled the Webpack 5 persistent caching mechanism by default. So whenever we do an npm run build, it will be creating a cache in our local disk. So if you go to our project folder, there will be a folder named dot angular which will be created. Inside that cache, the angular webpack folder, the cache will be persisted. So in this way, the subsequent incremental building will be much faster compared to the previous versions of Angular. Another API change that has been introduced in Angular 13 is related to the dynamic compound creation. So till Angular 12 versions, in case you needed to create a component dynamically, you needed to inject the component factory resolver. You had to call the resolve component factory inside the resolver and pass the dynamic component so that you will get a component factory which in turn needs to be passed into a view container. So Angular 13 has considerably eased this process and now you can directly pass the component to a create component method within our view container ref. A lot of boilerplate code has been reduced in Angular 13 with regards to the dynamic component creation. Coming to the unit testing part of Angular 13, the option teardown which is available in the test bed has been enabled by default. You no longer need to give this option explicitly in the test.ts. So this is inbuilt in the Angular 13. So one major advantage of using the teardown in destroy after each is that after each unit test case, 
your test environment will be reset like component level styles will be removed from the dom the application level providers will be destroyed and recreated and all those kinds of things will be performed and also in case you need to override this option for any particular spec file you can do that inside our test bed so here you can give the option tear down and you can turn this flag as false in case you do not need to tear down after each of the unit test case now let's take a look at some of the minor features that have been introduced in angular 13 so one such feature is related to the date pipe so here you can see that i am calling the date pipe in the angular 12 application so i am passing the current date to the date pipe and passing the format as short so here you can see that the date is shown and the time is in the local time so in case i needed to show it in a particular time zone i needed to pass this as a second parameter the time will be properly adjusted to the time zone which i passed so there was no option in angular 12 to configure this at a global level so in case i needed to convert all my uh, date times to this particular time zone i needed to go to each and every html and add this so now in angular 13 they have introduced a provider called date pipe default time zone and here you can provide the default time zone which can be applied at a global level so here you can see that in the angular 13 application i am not giving any option here but even then our time zone is getting reflected another feature introduced is the dynamic addition of validators so here in case of a max length validator i have given the value dynamically the value from the variable max as 3 so here in this case you can see that the max length is given in the html and it is 3 so now the status is invalid and in case i reduce that it will be valid so now there is an option like in case i pass the value as null the max length validator itself won't be available within our html and you can see that the form is shown as valid also a new type called form control status has been created so these are the four valid statuses for a form and previously it used to be any now they have created a type so that it is more restrictive let's take a look at some of the minor changes that have been introduced as part of the router module so one bug they have fixed is that previously in case a query string had two question marks what will happen is that immediately after this particular question mark it will be terminated the query param will contain only the key value pair of q and hello but now what they will be doing is they will be splitting it into two and the initial thing will be q with hello along with the question mark and after that the second key will be other and 123 so this is one minor bug fix they have done similarly they have modified the behavior for the router link so previously in case you you gave the value null or undefined it will consider it to be an empty string and there was no way to disable the navigation so now they will be totally removing the navigation for such links which have the router link as null or undefined so these were some of the updates that were introduced as part of the angular 13 See you soon. Thank you.